Jaws came out in 1975, and it's widely regarded as not only the start of summer blockbusters becoming a thing, but shark movies becoming a thing as well. And, well, almost every other shark movie that came out after Jaws sucked, including its sequels. Usually the question is, which Jaws sequel is your favorite, because if the first one is in the choices, that's the one you're going to be picking. And usually the sequels picked the most is either two or four. Oh geez, I'm so shocked that three wasn't chosen. But what if I were to tell you guys that there is in fact a fifth Jaws movie that you probably never heard of? Because there is! Well, kind of. L let me explain. While it might still happen nowadays, where you have an obvious ripoff trying to bank off of the success of a way better movie, it was more prominent in the 70s to late 90s. Outside of the US, it was a lot easier for people to get away with ripping off movies. Like Strike Commando, being a ripoff of Rambo, Robo Wars, which was basically Predator, and Terminator 2. I'll give you one guess which movie this was ripping off of. That's right. Aliens. But what do all of these movies have in common? They were all directed by this guy, Bruno Mattei. Of course, he goes by several different pen names, so it might be kind of hard to track them down, but he did indeed direct all of these movies. He mainly directed exploitation films, and if you don't know what those are, well, let me just explain. Gross. Yeah, I don't really like exploitation films. When you hear exploitation films, they usually mean they have three things in them. Nudity, gore, and extreme violence, which isn't really my cup of tea. Although the movies that I mentioned before are technically exploitations in the form of mockbusters, which is used to exploit the popular movies. Hence the name. And in 1995, Bruno made Cruel Jaws, also known as Jaws 5 outside of the US. Is it any better than the other three sequels? Well, let's just watch it and find out. Oh, okay, well, we're just going to start. I don't have enough booze for this one. Okay, so the film starts with this epic opening of three guys talking about looting some military stuff and then selling it to get rich. Hurry up, you guys. If the Coast Guard catches us... There was top-secret Navy material on board the Cleveland. We're going down to retrieve it. So, they swim into a cave for some reason, when suddenly... Oh no! That might be a shark! Okay, what the hell is happening? Why did that explode? Why are you packing the explosive harpoons? And that's obviously a puppet. Okay, gotta order some more vodka. So Cruel Jaws is trying to bury these guys, I, I think. It's hard to tell, it's very dark. Which, by the way, I don't think they ever actually explain his intelligence. Oh yeah, sure buddy, I'm sure you got a great view of what's happening in the bottom of the ocean at NIGHT! Wait, why did you pack the C4? Did you know you were going to go up against this shark? What is he, like, the boss you have to get through at the end of the level? And they keep cutting to this guy while this is happening! Why keep cutting back to a guy who has no connection to what's going on in the plot? Okay, so I guess they're dead. Oh my god, watch out! It's a dolphin! Ah! Whiplash from sudden scene transition! Yeah, no joke, Cruel Jaws, which, by the way, Jaws 2, thought you were slick, comes out to attack the boat guy and immediately van on the highway with this couple. Left me to go chasing killer whales. What have you got in life for me this year? All the while, this Sega Genesis music plays, and I swear, this one piece of music is the best thing in this movie. Oh, well, there goes the helicopter. I guess the pilot was done with this film. Wait, wait, wait hold up. Is that a different van? I swear, the colors are different. Something smells fishy. Here. Don't worry, we're just gonna go say hi to the guys, okay? 
Produced by John Kent. Well, I guess we know why he didn't want Clark to save him from the tornado now. Um, guys, you forgot the camera. Guys, you, you forgot the- Ah, dolphin jump scare! <laughs> okay, what the hell is going on? Now we're in a SeaWorld show, where the actors are obviously not there, because every time it cuts to them, they're obviously looking at nothing with mild amusement. Vanessa, so you finally came back. You're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have heard what you said over the fucking circus music playing. Oh, she's crippled. I'm sad now. Except she's a fucking liar. Her legs are clearly working here. I have two great teachers, Cookie and Daisy. Come and let me introduce you to Poppy. Um, hi. Can we do that line read again? And this time, can the dolphin shut the hell up? So Billy, the blue Power Ranger, came to visit Hulk Hogan, who owns this aquarium. I guess this is an alternate universe where he owns this instead of that beach shop. It's good to have you back here with us, Billy. It was terrible. That scene change? I would agree. Split second, I lost everything. I lost my wife, my will to live, most of all, Susie's smile. Aw oh, man, what a depressing moment. I would sure hate it if the clown music came back. Time she feels like so Hogan is also getting evicted in 30 days. You've got to be out of here in 30 days. Yeah, well, you've always been a good friend, sure. And besides, 30 days is a long time. A fat money grubbing bastard. I like to rip his balls off. Well, that ain't. But enough about that. Here's a couple running around in the beach. <laughs> hey, why don't you go bust somebody else's balls? <laughs> yeah, you told him, guy. Who are you? <laughs> Uh, do you mind? I'm trying to soak some rays here. So the cop, who literally was just talking to Billy, is now bringing him down to the body. I guess this is the next day or something, because the outfit changed. I got you down here because I need your opinion on this. This looks like the work of a speedboat propeller to me. Okay, how the fuck did that look like a propeller accident? Okay, you know what? Let's just see what the fish expert has to say about this. Okay, everybody, back it up, back it- Ah, fuck it, never mind. Well, what do you think? In my opinion, it wasn't a speedboat propeller. Ah, Holmes! I dare to say you cracked another case there! Then what was it? it Could have been a shark. Billy, I need a precise answer here. Francis, these remains have been in the water for more than 24 hours. There's no saying how many fish have been feeding on it. Oh yeah, clearly this body has been in the ocean for more than 24 hours. What with it not bloated up and it clearly has been decaying for a while now. And... I shit you not, the next scene is literally less than a minute long. Oh, here, basically this is the next scene. An autopsy is the only way you're going to get a precise answer. It was a shark, alright. And a big one. Are you all out of your mind? Again, with the abrupt scene changes, I feel like they need to add like some sort of sound effect to go with it. It was a shark, alright. And a big one. Are you all out of your mind? So, they have to go to the mayor to have that scene from Jaws where they go see the mayor about the shark attack and he doesn't want to close the beaches. Before he gets out to the shark tour and drive it to bits, hey, you can kiss the tourist season. Bye. Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. If there is a shark around here, gentlemen, we don't have any choice. We have to close the beach and we have to postpone the regatta. It was an accident, just an accident. Propel the fishing boat. What about the coroner's report? Francis! Now, the coroner called me two minutes ago. He said he could be wrong. Oh shit, he hit him with the updated autopsy report. Why, hell, you know how many people drowned in accidents? Are you gonna blame them all on sharks, too? Yeah, maybe. That's it, I'm whacking both of you. There's only one shark that can do a job like this. Actually, several sharks probably could have done this. My first thought probably would have been like a bull shark. They're pretty aggressive. And which one is that? The tiger shark. <laughs> a tiger shark, sure. I... Seriously? It's like one of the top three most aggressive sharks. There's at least two more that could have been just as aggressive as this. From the judge of things, it's gotta have a mouth like this. <laughs> Did you not see the bite mark? It did not look this big. From the judge of things, it's gotta have a mouth like this. Fuck! 
Fuck off! Uh, look who's here! What, did you not recognize them behind the net? Hi, Bob. Hello! Oh, hi, Gloria. <laughs> Looks like your little sister has a crush on the Viking son. Why are you so close, dude? Back off. What did Billy and Francis want last night? Ah, uh, those crazy bastards. They got it in their heads as a shark around here. A shark in the ocean? That's unheard of. So the guy that was with the mayor is also this guy's father, and I'll be honest, I don't really remember who's who. Yes, me. Dag Sorensen's behind us. He wants to get back at you because you sent him that eviction notice. No, no. No, he's got too much to lose. Also, that makes no sense. What, did he bite the diver? Did you know that Gloria has got a crush on Bob? Dirty little bastard. I'll tear his fucking balls off. I don't think that'll be necessary. Camera guy, can you can you back off a bit? You're getting too close. You're getting too close. So the movie cuts to these two, who I think are new with a day to night shot, which is basically replaying the first scene from the first movie. That's a great white. You you couldn't even try to get tiger shark footage, could you? No, no, the seal brings up a good question. What? That's enough for the night, honey. Yes, that's enough for the day to night, honey. Wait a while longer, please, Daddy. Gloria's having such fun. One of Hogan's sons takes the not mayor's daughter home where they have some romance on the same level as Attack of the Clones. First your dad throwing us out of the aquarium, and then that shark. Things couldn't get any worse. I'm sorry. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. I'm sorry. And that hasn't been the same since Mom died, and Susie lost the use of her legs. When he was young, he was a great sailor. He used to hunt whales in the North Sea. So he's a criminal? I feel so ridiculous. When you see and feel certain things, you suddenly realize how futile the things you strive for are. Uh, you really shouldn't mumble because I can't understand a word you're saying. But then not Mayor's son and his goons show up to beat up Hogan's son. Go home. Not what I have things to discuss. Go! Go! And then she just goes home. I mean, she doesn't bother calling the cops or anyone for help. She just leaves. Oh yeah, we were supposed to hold him. Sorry, boss. You need a lesson. The world's a bad place, Bobby boy. And you and your daddy are in the get up to your neck. But they aren't done with just beating up the sun. Oh no, they have even more dastardly plans to enact. They're going to feed the dolphins. You magnificent bastard, I read your book! They were actually just going to poison them, but did we really need this side plot? Get Billy immediately. Someone's trying to poison dolphins. What the fuck is Billy going to do? Call up Zordon and summon the other rangers? He says his girlfriend's been eaten by a shark. Eaten by a shark? <laughs> he must be stewed to the gills. I'll give him the test, and then I'll throw him in the who's for drunkenness. No, wait, wait. Are shark attacks so rare that you're just going to assume that this guy is drunk and just throw him in jail? Wait, wait a minute, that's the same cop from earlier that didn't give a shit. How does he still have a job? Oh, wait, wait. I want to interrogate him. We got him just in time. Everything's gonna be fine now. Well, that's the end of the dolphin poisoning subplot of the film. Oh yeah, badass cop who can't even get a real looking police door. It's just a crappy sticker. Oh, hi Francis. 
Huh. Oh, man. For a second there, I thought the goblin shark was going to get me. Looks like we had another shark attack last night. Billy, what do we know about sharks? I mean, next to nothing, apparently. Well, we know that they're a sort of locomotive with a, with a mouth full of butcher's knives. So, yeah, next to nothing. Not Mayor Guy shows up to show some business people around and conduct business, even though this is still private property and I don't think he can just walk in unannounced. But I'll beat the shit out of anyone who tries to poison my dolphins. I don't even know what you're talking about, and... Don't be so wicked, Mr. Lewis. Gloria cares about Pookie and Daisy, too. I don't think she's anywhere near this conversation. Smash. Okay, that one was all on you, dude. That seal lightly tapped you at the most. Convincing the mayor to shut down round two. Mayor Jefferson, this shark is a perfect machine. A man-eating machine, and it's already taken the lives of two people. Put shark myth around a boundary to regatta. What is with this movie and not establishing anything? Seriously, every scene is like this. Next scene, Billy and his girlfriend are having a who can kiss worse competition. She's early. And wow, that was some terrible ADR. I'll just tell her to go on with that. So the next few scenes are as follows. Cop comes to see Billy for some reason. Girlfriend gets pissed for absolutely no reason. Once and for all, Billy, is the fish or me? I mean, there are two dead people from shark attacks and he is apparently the only fish expert around. So she just immediately starts hitting on Bulk and Skull here with her friend. And then we have this ultimately pointless scene of this horrible dance club. <laughs> But then Billy shows up, only to be discouraged before we cut back to Hulk's son with his girlfriend again and they have like two different conversations or something. We have to keep seeing each other behind in secret. I love this place. <laughs> Are the only things to do in this place is run around the beach and get eaten by sharks? <laughs> Ugh, this dialogue, it's like playing The Sims. <laughs> oh no, the ominous music. Vanessa! Come on in, it's warm! Ah! A tiger shark! That's not a tiger shark! You fool around in the ocean. <laughs> Action Bay Police! Don't you dirty little devils know you're polluting the ocean doing that? I'm Ronnie Lewis. Samuel Lewis' son. Tommy. Is that you? It's us all right. And you two jerks fall for this whole thing like a ton of bricks. Okay, so either they're so far away that they can't see them, or they're close enough that they can speak to each other. You can't have both, movie. Oh, look out! The shark is about to nip you on the ass! <laughs> you ass. Now, so you the shark. Yeah, they're not even knee-deep in the ocean. I don't think the shark is going to get them. <laughs> Oh, you're all wet. <laughs> I wanted to personally re- No, 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 stop. What the fuck was that? You can't, movie. You can't just cut to a second of a crappy shark prop and then just to the next scene. You, you can't do that. Okay, so they set up a barrier and net around the area to hold the shark at bay, even though they never really bothered to make sure the shark was on the other side when they put the gate up and- uh, Okay, that's just a Mako shark. You're not even trying anymore. How fucking hard was it to find tiger shark footage from like Discovery Channel, Animal Planet or something? Don't kill the dog. This wouldn't be the first time this director killed an animal on screen. Don't kill the dog. Hmm, if we keep cutting back the shots of the ocean, it'll be like something is happening. Oh yeah, sure. That forest camo is really gonna help you out in the sky above the ocean, genius. I have to get him first. Otherwise the bass will dive down and that'll be that. I got him in the head. Bill, I can see you missed both times. I'll tell the boats to go retrieve him. Stay with the retrieval operation. Good work, guys. Over. Where 
What a big mouth. It's bigger than a big bad wolf. Isn't it, Daddy? Oh, shut up. Well, it's a, it's a tiger shark, all right. No, it's not. That's a lemon shark. I'm not saying that it isn't him. It, it probably is. They're they're very ferocious and very rare in these waters, but... Tiger sharks are not rare. They're found mostly in tropical areas and mostly around Florida. And also, that's not a tiger shark! Also, I have to ask, does this guy not know how to use a cigar? Because every time he has one in his mouth, he just sucks on it. Did they only have, like, one prop and just couldn't waste it? While this is going down, the Coast Guard finds that boat from the beginning of the movie. What happened? We found it adrift. It was half full of water. There was nobody aboard. Also, you have, like, no authorization to be part of this investigation. And so the regatta commences, which for some reason has cheerleaders. And then they get ready for a sailboat race. I just don't feel right about this, though. I'm afraid, Francis. That motherfucker is acting so strange. It's, it's almost as if someone has trained him to attack and kill. <laughs> okay, so someone trained a shark to attack and kill? Where exactly did you get your degree, sir? Five minutes to start time. All right, good job there, Phil. Let's do it again for real this time. And don't forget to turn on the megaphone. What was that? We well, can only do one take? All right, let's keep it moving, people. Next scene. Victory celebration. Ah, why this music? It sounds like it's a Juicy Fruit commercial. Don't worry, I'll win for us too. I'll rip his balls off and use them for earrings. Man, this movie has a weird obsession with ripping people's balls off. All contestants to the starting line. Two God, minutes Phil, to come go. on, turn on the megaphone. It's a simple button, Phil. I repeat, two minutes to go. Phil, you're not even talking into the megaphone. Wait, where did we get this guy? And so the race begins. I sure hope nothing unfortunate happens. That's great, white. Not a tiger shark. Did you guys even bother opening a book? 13 seconds to go. So I'm guessing the shots of a shark attacking a shark cage is supposed to be attacking the gate? It cuts to it every few seconds, even though this shot here would clearly suggest that it's currently watching them. Nobody. And I don't believe you guys are actually windsurfing! Gloria, give me the binoculars. Wow, maybe everybody in this town is a fucking ventriloquist! Oh my god! What's wrong? Get them out of the water! Oh no! Cruel Jaws is here! Get out of the water! Everybody! Get out of the water! And where the fuck are the guards that you had posted here? They picked a really good time to all go out on lunch. Attention! Attention! The race has been suspended! Leave your boards and get in the smoke! Come on. Oh, now that's just straight from another movie. That looks like they just got on the Jaws ride at Universal and videotaped that. So, yeah, panic and disorder run rampant as stock footage of other shark movies just show up. I'm not even kidding. Every shark attack in this film is lifted from another movie, either from Jaws or another shark film. It's one of the reasons why this barely has a US release. And I guess along with immediately cheating on Billy, his girlfriend also just abandons the crippled child. Oh, come on, that crippled girl just used her legs again. What is this, a bad insurance scam? By the way, are we ever gonna have like a discussion with Billy and his girlfriend about her cheating on him? Oh, I guess not. 
Yeah, just believe us, she's totally dead, guys. God, you couldn't even get, like, some red color dye to throw into the water? And so, a bunch of people are rushed to the hospital, including Hulk Hogan's daughter. And see, this guy's totally Hulk Hogan. He's even hanging out with bootleg Razor Ramon. Sharks are really bad. <laughs> there are far worse animals. Ooh, commentary. Hey, you know I what you gotta do now, don't you, Sam? What? You're gonna have to offer a reward of $100,000 to whoever brings in the head of that shark. I don't know, $100,000 seems like a lot for one shark. I don't have the authority. I mean, not, not without... Without out what? Without what, you fat fuck? Offer the reward. Do it for Vanessa and all the kids who lost their lives today. Yeah, all those nameless kids. Shark isn't gonna be easy. He's a treacherous mother. It's not like fishing for... Well, at least they credited the artist here. Although it looks like all they did was poorly trace over this picture I found on the internet. But at least the stuff is spelled correctly. Oh, and don't think I'm gonna let you get away with stealing a line from Jurassic Park. Tiger shark we're looking for is a homicidal maniac. When it attacks here, here, in the middle of your belly and your guts are out. Here. Or here. Oh, well. Or maybe across the belly, spilling your intestines. Trouble is, you're still alive when he starts eating you. The point is, you are alive when they start to eat you. Now that you know, you should have more respect for him. So, you know, try to show a little respect. Okay. Billy, you're the expert. Take over. The weak points of the tiger shark are here at the base of the head and underneath the dorsal fin. Actually, the weak points of a shark is said to be its eyes, its gills, and its heart. Because if this thing gets any idea whatsoever that you're in its presence, he's not going to leave you alone. You can try to kill him. Because if you don't, he's going to kill you. Are there any questions? How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? So we're now about 30 minutes till the end of this movie. Hulk Hogan has assembled his Hogan heroes to hunt down the shark. While the not mayor guy, Lewis, has a meeting with the mob? What? If it was your decision to go ahead with the regatta, then our friends in New York are not going to be very happy. He, he has mafia ties? I... Sure, why not? We've done a lot of mistakes, Sam. You know that. We've invested a lot of money in real estate in this town. So you better make sure that shark is eliminated immediately. Yeah, you better make sure that shark is sleeping with the fishes, or else you's going to find yourself sleeping with said fish. So it's Lewis's son and his three dipshit friends off to go sure kill the shark. I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> well, right now he's got other things to worry about. <laughs> Besides, when he sees us haul that shark in the port, he'd be too proud to be mad. And since they're not the main characters, I'm sure they're all gonna make it out alive. So you got Team A and Team Dead. Twelve gauge. Cool. Groovy. I got a shotgun. <laughs> So Team Sharkbait finds Cruel Jaws and the not mayor's son starts shooting at him. And each time it cuts to the shark, it's a different shark! And fair warning, you're about to witness what's probably going to be the stupidest thing you're going to see in a long while. Okay, first, that's great gun control. Not putting your finger on the trigger till you're ready to shoot. Perfect. What's not perfect is how the fuck do you miss the shark with a shotgun? It's right there! Or, well, the stock footage is right there. The line breaks and the metal pole somehow ends up behind this guy and it flings him out of the boat and I guess he never learned how to swim. Help me out! Help me out! And then you have the pinnacle of stupid. Lady decides to take the gas canister for some reason and then douse the boat in gasoline. All the while, doofus number two gets a flare gun and not only thinks that'll kill the shark, but he puts the flare gun under the currently flowing gasoline. Sheriff, we received a message from the Coast Guard. Lewis's boat exploded at sea. 
no survivors. Oh, <sighs> oh well, nothing important was lost. That all boats are to return to port at once. And I'll go tell Lewis the bad news. Okay. The rudder's stuck. Wait, how, how the fuck did it get stuck? You're in the middle of open water. Did everybody get their boat from Etsy? Hogan's son number two goes into the water to fix the rudder. I guess because Hogan can't die. Held the tension for a full second. Oh, never mind. I guess Jaws just wasn't hungry right now. I mean, he's killed everything he's seen so far. Why stop now? This is the Coast Guard. Return to the port immediately. Repeat. Return to the port immediately. Something big must have happened in town. Or something exploded a few minutes ago. Did you forget about that? So everybody heads back into town because, I, I don't know, they need to kill like 10 more minutes or something, with the cop getting in the helicopter to go fight Cruel Jaws. Holy Jardine! You ought to be over 8 meters long! Yeah, there's no way that thing's 26 feet. We need a bigger helicopter! You're gonna need a bigger boat. Pull up! For Christ's sake, pull up! Really? Okay, well, because the cop who was the most sensible so far has become stupid, that means he's going to die soon. Why don't you just cut the fucking line? Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. I'm gonna shoot that motherfucker right between his eyes. Wait, what? Why didn't you just start with the gun? What was the plan before the gun? Okay, for a cop, that's terrible gun control. I expected better. Well, what do you know? It's not every day you see the stupidest thing you've ever seen. Oh my god, this movie is... Stupid! What else could I have done? That shark can't be taken. It killed my only son. It's destroyed my yacht. My helicopter. Wait, that was a yacht? So now the Mafia is gonna get their revenge on Jaws. You sent Ronnie to die because you're scared of your partners? I only did it for you all. Wait, wait I thought the son went on his own free will to fight Jaws. And seriously, now you're gonna decide to do something? Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, so it's revealed that Cruel Jaws is a shark born in captivity that was trained to fight the enemy. Doesn't explain how he got so intelligent, but whatever, movie's almost over. But what's the wreck got to do with the shark? That ship was carrying a shark born in captivity. Top secret naval experiments. A death machine trained to attack the enemy. So be good, for goodness sake. Whoa, somebody's we coming. We have to get out of here. We've got Somebody to find a judge or something. Hey, wait a minute. My plan, we go down to the wreck of the Cleveland, we fill it with dynamite, and we blow it to bits. Why not just contact the Coast Guard, who could then contact the Navy to go over there and drop some depth charges? Why is your first plan to dive into the ship to leave dynamite? But then Girl decides to finally do something and comes in to warn Hogan and the Ho gang about the Mafia going after the aquarium. They're bad people, you're in danger. Susie, she's all along with the aquarium. Look, man, aren't they the ones who were supposed to let Boston in order to take care of? That's them, all right. What do we do? Well, good job saying that when they're not even, like, two feet from the car, dude. Okay, so this was all just an elaborate way to get Team Good Guys to leave the plans in the building so that Team Bada Bing can go in and steal the plans and then go after the military ship for themselves. All the while, Team Hogan has to fix the engines that they sabotaged. Alright, try it now!
Well, that was pointless. So Team Bada Boom goes diving down into the shipwreck. <laughs> oh no, who saw that coming? So they just show up to waste five minutes of our time and then die. Okay, last ten minutes. It's down to just our heroes against the shark. And they have no scuba gear at all besides the oxygen tanks and the masks as they all dive down and start planting charges. And I can't tell who's who. And every few seconds it just cuts the Thunderlips over here looking in his binoculars to try to make this scene tense. Why didn't you go into the ship with a detonator in the beginning? Alright, they got the detonator set up and the two sons come back, but Bill is left behind, so one of the sons, I can't fucking tell them apart, I think he's the one with the girlfriend, goes to save him. Mom goes off, and even though the shark was near Hogan's ship, Cruel Jaws just explodes, which I guess he just dies of sadness then. And then they celebrate. The good guys live, Hogan gets the money, they pay off the aquarium, and everybody lives happily ever after. Oh, except for the rich guy, whose only crime is that he didn't want the town to go bankrupt, and even though he spent a lot of money to try and protect the people, he gets blamed for it and loses his son over it. And now is out $100,000, and there's no way the Mafia is just going to forget about this whole situation. But hey, look, the seal knocked him into the pool again. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Look at the check falling into the water, becoming useless. Hilarious. So that was Cruel Jaws, and even though I basically bashed it the entire way through, I think it's one of those so bad it's good kind of movies. Yeah, the writing is terrible, the special effects are basically non-existent, the characters are forgettable, but I would be lying if I said I didn't laugh the entire way through. There are bad movies like this one that are fun to watch at least once. And honestly, because it's so bad that it's good, it's probably the best Jaws sequel that we have, if not a very close second. It's kind of a shame that they didn't use any Jaws 3D scenes, or at least any that I didn't see. I wonder what that would look like. Gloria, give me the binoculars. Oh my god!